Hello everyone. Today, I'm excited to dive into a mysterious sci-fi thriller directed by Ben Young, released in July 2018. Extinction. Meet Peter, a man haunted by recurring nightmares of an alien invasion that strains his relationship with his family. But when these terrifying visions become reality, Peter desperately battles to protect his loved ones from an alien force bent on humanity's destruction. As his world falls apart, Peter uncovers a strength he never knew he had. Can Peter save his family and prevent the world from facing extinction? Stay tuned as we explore the intense journey in this thrilling recap. In a bustling town center, people are engaged in everyday activities, creating an air of peacefulness and safety untouched by crime. Suddenly, the calm is shattered as hundreds of unidentified flying objects tear through the sky, launching attacks on the unsuspecting civilians below. Amidst the chaos, Peter watches in horror from a nearby building just as a missile is fired in his direction. In that instant, he wakes up beside his wife, Alice, drenched in sweat from what is revealed to be one of his recurring nightmares. In these nightmares, Peter and those close to him endure brutal encounters with a mysterious enemy reminiscent of an alien invasion. Despite Alice's repeated suggestions to seek psychiatric help, Peter dismisses her concerns, insisting the nightmares will cease on their own. This ongoing issue has strained their marriage, leading them to ignore each other. The couple's daughters, Hannah and Lucy, are also deeply concerned about their father's well-being, though Peter reassures them that he will resolve his troubles independently. The following day at Peter's home, the atmosphere is tense due to his disturbing dreams. To lift spirits, he promises to take the family to the pier later, delighting his youngest daughter, Lucy. He also plans a party for the next day to celebrate Alice's recent job promotion. Curiously, the city lacks educational institutions that keep all children at home, and despite the presence of social interactions, they come across as superficial and insincere. Later at work, Peter experiences another vision, which causes him to damage some equipment inadvertently. When he tries to address the malfunction, his empathetic boss, David, arrives. Aware of Peter's distress, David recommends a reputable clinic for help. Peter, however, is convinced that his visions are prophetic warnings of an imminent skyborne invasion, not mere figments of his imagination. David cautions him to seek help, warning that his job may be at stake if he refuses. Shortly thereafter, Peter is besieged by more unsettling visions. In a particularly vivid one, armed intruders burst into a building, indiscriminately firing at everyone present. He abruptly awakens, realizing he was dreaming at work again. Adding to his woes, he discovers he's missed the planned family outing, much to his children's dismay. Overwhelmed by his life's chaos, he resolves to seek professional help and schedules a visit to the clinic. The next morning, he informs Alice of his appointment, surprising and delighting her with his proactive step. At the clinic, Peter encounters another patient, Chris, who shares similar apocalyptic visions. Chris espouses bizarre theories of external forces attempting to manipulate and erase their memories, predicting imminent violent incursions on Earth. Although Peter is skeptical, given the mental state of the clinic's patients, he disregards the conversation. During his wait, Peter endures another peculiar vision involving his boss David and his family, all armed and patrolling the city. This reaffirms his belief in an impending invasion that he feels compelled to remember. Consequently, he departs the clinic abruptly, foregoing treatment. Upon returning home, when Alice inquires about his session, Peter confesses his ongoing visions, insisting they forewarn of a looming catastrophe. Frustrated, Alice dismisses his explanations, urging him to prepare for the evening's party. However, the party unfolds oddly, with guests seemingly uninterested in food, hinting at an unnatural indifference. Peter's unease grows as the night progresses, and he frequently scans the skies with a telescope from the balcony. His observations are interrupted when his neighbor, Ray, points out a glowing object plummeting from the heavens. Initially doubting his own perception, Peter is reassured by Ray that the phenomenon is indeed real, drawing Alice and Ray's wife, Samantha, to the spectacle. Suddenly, the object crashes into a nearby structure, unleashing a devastating shockwave that violently hurls Peter and the others back into the apartment through the shattered window. 
Regaining their footing, they returned to the balcony, only to witness a horde of similar objects descending upon the earth. In a state of panic, the group hurries back inside the house. Peter quickly checks on his children and finds that Hannah is at Ray's place, spending time with his daughter, Maddie. Without delay, he and Ray head over to retrieve the girls. However, their mission is interrupted by an alien soldier who suddenly appears and starts shooting at them. They manage to escape and find temporary cover. Once the coast is clear, they search for and eventually find the girls trapped in an elevator, along with the lifeless body of a woman, a grim indicator that the invaders are intent on destruction. After rescuing Hannah and Maddie, Peter and Ray witness an armed soldier executing residents mercilessly. They find a moment to part ways with Ray and his family safely. Back at his apartment, Peter reveals to Alice that the unfolding chaos mirrors the scenes from his recurring nightmares, although he admits he's unsure of what may come next. He suggests they should head to the safety of the factory where he works. As the sounds of violence grow closer, they quickly barricade their front door and secure the girls in their room. During this tense moment, someone attempts to break through the door. As Peter and Alice brace against the entry, their daughter Lucy leaves her room, searching for her soft toy, Herman, and hides under a table. The alien soldier, thwarted at the door, breaches the apartment by making a hole in the wall. Peter and Alice rush to protect their daughters, discovering Lucy missing from her hiding spot. Just then, the alien soldier locates Lucy and pauses, examining her closely. Seizing the moment, Peter attacks the soldier from behind, and with Alice's help, they manage to overpower the assailant. Armed with the soldier's weapon, Peter leads his family to the roof, where they reunite with Ray and his family. They are all horrified to see their city engulfed in flames, a bleak outcome of a society unprepared. Suddenly, an alien drone scanning the area forces them to conceal themselves. Realizing the roof offers no long-term safety, they attempt to escape using the glass cleaner's lift, but a malfunction forces them to take refuge in an empty apartment. Meanwhile, it becomes apparent that the earlier alien soldier is still alive and tracking them through a homing signal on the gun Peter had taken. Examining the weapon, Peter discovers it has a biometric trigger, usable only by its original owner. As they hear aliens closing in, Peter urges everyone to make for his factory's basement, which he believes to be a safe haven. Although aliens heavily patrol the area, Alice recalls tunnels she discovered during her work, which could provide a covert route to the basement. An unexpected barrage from an alien ship strikes suddenly, instantly claiming the lives of Ray and his family. Peter quickly leads his family from the apartment, but they soon encounter two armed aliens in the corridor. They swiftly take cover as Peter frantically overrides the rifle's biometric lock. Just in time, he activates the weapon and eliminates the alien threats. Peter then guides his family towards the safety of the tunnel, but as they near the entrance, the alien ships open fire again, wounding Alice. As he attends to his injured wife, the alien soldier they had encountered earlier reappears and launches an attack. Peter fights back, managing to crack the soldier's helmet. To everyone's astonishment, he is revealed to be human when the soldier removes his helmet. Peter demands explanations, but with Alice's condition worsening, he coerces the soldier at gunpoint to assist in transporting her to the factory for help. Upon their arrival at the factory, they are met by Peter's boss, David, and a group of armed men. The soldier is detained while a doctor attends to Alice. In a shocking turn, the doctor appears to electrocute Alice, treating her as if she were a piece of technology. David then reveals that an invasion had been anticipated for many years and was common knowledge among Earth's population. Further medical assessments indicate that Alice has sustained severe internal damage beyond repair. As the soldier is led away to face execution, he shouts back, claiming he has the means to save Alice. Skeptical but desperate, Peter decides to risk trusting the soldier, given the grim prognosis. He chooses to stay with the soldier and Alice while allowing David to evacuate their daughters to a subway station, where a transport train will take them to a secure location. The daughters leave, sharing a tearful farewell with their parents, uncertain if they will ever reunite. Shortly thereafter, the soldier reveals a startling truth by opening Alice's wound further, exposing wires within her body. Overwhelmed by the revelation, Peter demands an explanation leading to the soldier's disclosure that Alice is, in fact, an artificial intelligence robot. Stunned by the discovery, 
Peter is momentarily speechless. The soldier, however, reminds him that Peter must become the alternative power source to save Alice. Under the soldier's direction, Peter hesitantly uses a pocket knife to cut into his own chest. Despite making a deep incision, he feels no pain, a revelation that becomes clearer when he sees synthetic organs and wires within himself confirming his own synthetic nature. As he wrestles with this new reality, the soldier connects a cable between him and Alice, which overwhelms Peter, causing him to faint. During this unconscious state, Peter vividly relives his recurring nightmares, which he now understands are not forecasts of future events, but memories of a past conflict. Years earlier, humans had engineered synthetic robots into improve life on Earth. As these synthetics evolved, they began seeking rights equivalent to humans, desiring education, emotions, family life, and even the ability to bear children, swiftly denied requests. Fearing a potential rebellion, the human military preemptively struck the unarmed synthetics, igniting a violent confrontation. The synthetics, leveraging their superior physical capabilities and intelligence, retaliated, eventually expelling humans from Earth. It is also disclosed that Peter was involved in these skirmishes and that he and Alice first connected amid this strife. They encountered Hannah and Lucy, two synthetic children mourning their human adoptive parents who possibly couldn't conceive. Moved by their plight and grappling with their own remorse over the human lives taken, Peter and Alice decided to adopt the girls. Many synthetics, including Peter's family, chose to erase their wartime memories to live undetected among humans, devoid of recollection of their origins or past actions. Meanwhile, individuals like David retain their memories to prepare for a possible human retribution. Peter also learns that the clinic he had visited was suppressing synthetics' memories. As fragments of these memories resurface among the synthetics, they find themselves again directed to such facilities. Returning to the present, Peter and Alice regain consciousness and listen as the soldier, Miles, shares that after the human exodus to Mars, they spent decades nurturing their desire for revenge. Educated on Mars, the younger generation was taught to view synthetics as merciless killers. Over 50 years, humans have developed sophisticated weaponry and machines, planning their return to Earth to reclaim what they believed was rightfully theirs. However, Miles' encounter with Lucy hiding fearfully under the table, changed his perspective, revealing the human-like qualities of synthetics who had families and children. Realizing they were not the monsters he was led to believe, Miles chose not to follow through with his orders to kill. Though surprised by Miles's change of heart, Peter expresses gratitude for his assistance. They depart, but as they approach the train tracks, they find themselves caught in a fierce crossfire between the synthetics and humans. The synthetics, however, hold their ground, enabling Peter and Alice to make their way to the station. Even as the humans follow them to the station, David intervenes, firing at the attackers and securing a chance for Peter, Alice, and himself to board the departing train. As the train speeds away from the ravaged city, David confides in Peter about his decision to retain his memories, which ultimately equipped him for the confrontation. Peter responds with a gentle smile, expressing hope for a future where peace between humans and synthetics might be possible. The film concludes as the train leaves the city, providing those on board a moment to strategize and reflect on their tumultuous past and uncertain future. What are your thoughts on the film's story? Please share your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more captivating stories like this. See you in the next video.